hello guys welcome back to my channel so today we will start with a new topic that is autonomic nervous system so before we know about autonomic nervous system let us have a glimpse on the classification of the nervous system so nervous system is basically divided into two main subparts that is peripheral nervous system and central nervous system so central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord except brain and spinal cord every other organs that are present in our periphery comes under peripheral nervous system further peripheral nervous system is divided into somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system and central nervous system is divided into brain and spinal cord so autonomic nervous system is a part of central nervous system or more precisely the peripheral nervous system so autonomic nervous system is basically divided into three main subgroups sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system and enteric nervous system so what is sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system are the main topic for us to discuss in case of any emergency situation or any situation under stress is when the sympathetic nervous system gets activated so sympathetic nervous system after getting activated they try to sympathize with us so that we can come out of that emergency situation whereas parasympathetic nervous system is completely opposite to that of sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system tries to normalize our body everything that is happening when we are in our resting position comes under parasympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system is often known as fight or flight response so whenever our, there is an emergency situation our body gets prepared to fight that situation and in case of parasympathetic nervous system it is called as rest and digest activity that is when our body is in a rest position when we are not in any kind of stress some activities are carried out that is carried out by the parasympathetic nervous system and enteric nervous system it is basically concerned with the git so we will see what happens in sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system and their organization in our body and their function what they does in the other organs so let us see whenever this autonomic nervous system it is acting basically it is acting or it regulates three main things that is cardiac muscle all the smooth muscles and the glands so from the name itself we can understand autonomic nervous system that means all the activities that are happening automatically comes under this autonomic nervous system like cardiac muscles we don't have any control over our cardiac muscles it uh, regulates it is contracted it gets relaxed and it is doing whatever depending upon their autonomic system but we are not having any kind of control over them similarly all the smooth muscles that are present either in our bronchioles or any other part of our body they are all innervated by this autonomic nervous system also the glands except for our neuromuscular junction in skeletal muscles it is something that is in our conscious control we can move it in our consciousness but these things cardiac muscles smooth muscle and glands their regulation is not at all in our control so these are the three main things that are regulated by the autonomic nervous system so next we have the organization of the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system so the nerve that originates from the thoracic and lumbar region are the sympathetic system and those nerve that originate from the cranial and the sacral region are the parasympathetic system so this is the ganglia and this part is known as preganglionic fiber and this is the postganglionic fiber 
we can see that in case of parasympathetic system, the preganglionic fiber is longer than the postganglionic fiber. Whereas in case of sympathetic system, the preganglionic fiber is shorter and the postganglionic fiber is much longer. Here the neurotransmitter that is released by the preganglionic fiber is always acetylcholine, whether it be in case of parasympathetic system or sympathetic system. And the receptor that is present in the postganglionic fiber is NN receptor. Now the difference is the neurotransmitter released by the postganglionic fiber. In case of parasympathetic system, it is the acetylcholine that is released by the postganglionic fiber. Whereas in case of sympathetic system, it is the noradrenaline that is released by the postganglionic fiber. But in case of sympathetic system, there is an exceptional in case of sweat gland, where acetylcholine is released by the postganglionic fiber in case of sympathetic system. So, this was about the organization of the parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system. Next we have, so let us see what happens when the parasympathetic system or the sympathetic system gets activated. So, in case of heart, when the sympathetic system gets activated, the heart rate and the contractility increases, which increases the output. The cardiac output, when it gets increased, the supply of blood throughout the body increases which helps us in the emergency or the stressful situation. Second comes the pupil. So the sympathetic system dilates the pupil that is midriasis occur. Midriasis occur because whenever we are in a fearful situation or stressful situation let us take an example of we are standing in a dark room at that time our pupil gets wide open so that more and more light can get into the eye and we can see clear so this is why the pupils get dilated whenever the sympathetic system is activated same goes for bronchioles so the in case of bronchus it gets dilated and when it gets dilated oxygen movement in the blood increases more and more oxygen can move in the blood which is important for us and that stressful situation for the GIT the peristalsis decreases this is because whenever we are in a stressful situation we don't want to poop if the peristalsis increases then maybe we will have a feeling of poop or to urinate so at that time, for partic that particular time, our peristalsis gets very low and the sphincter, they get tightened. And therefore, the urine outflow also decreases. Then comes for the gland. Often we have seen that whenever we are in some kind of tension or stress or in fearful situation, our mouth, it gets dry. This happens because at that time the sympathetic system is activated and the secretion or by the glands decreases. So this is what happens in case of activation of sympathetic system. Whereas just in contrast to the sympathetic system, the parasympathetic system decreases the heart rate and the contractility. It tries to normalize the heart rate and the contraction of the heart so that it is in the normal situation. Then for the pupil, the pupils get constricted because we are just sitting idle or we are in a restful mode. This is why the pupil remains constricted and same goes for the bronchus. The bronchus also remains constricted. For the GIT, the peristalsis increases and the sphincter also gets relaxed. And at that time, easily the food that have, we have taken can digest slowly and steadily. And the urine outflow also increases and the gland they start increasing their secretion so all the normal thing are done by the parasympathetic system so this is why the parasympathetic system is more dominant than the sympathetic system because sympathetic system only gets triggered when there is any kind of emergency but the parasympathetic system they regulate the normal position or the normal homeostasis of our body so, this is some of the differences and function organization of 
parasympathetic system and the sympathetic system so for this video that's it in next video we will know more about this uh, ans and the drugs that are related to the ans so if you like the video then please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's meet in the next video thank you